Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Just a couple of announcements before we begin worship. Uh, first of all, on Wednesday morning, the Senior Saints program meets at Broadway Apartments for those who are 55 years and older. And it's a Christmas-themed program this month, so be sure to be there for that. And then on Wednesday evening of this week, there's an event you will not want to miss. On Wednesday evening, the children of our church, kids from both the Sunday School and the Wednesday School program, are presenting their Christmas program. Sandy Hartman and some others have been working with them, and I attended the dress rehearsal this past week and was just amazed at how good the music was, how excited the kids were. Um, so many kids. <laughs> if on Sundays you say, where are all the children? The answer is Wednesday nights. They're just dozens and dozens and dozens of children. So, uh, wonderful program that you won't want to miss that will take place this Wednesday at 6.15 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And remember that the Wednesday dinner is being held that evening, the hour before from 5 to 6. And the menu this week is Sloppy Joe's and Kids Eat Free. And the Wednesday dinners have been very well attended. And contrary to some rumors that continue to go around, the Wednesday dinner does not lose money for us in our budget. It is breaking even or even above. And so be sure to stop in um, and have dinner on Wednesday or just simply come to the program then on Wednesday evening at 6.15. Next Sunday morning, during worship, our Good Shepherd Adult Choir is sharing their Christmas cantata. And so we're looking forward to that. They're practicing again after worship today. Um, and then I want to point out that in our prayers this week, we continue to pray for Eldo Overbo. He has gone home this past week after being either hospitalized or at Parkview uh, at one place or another for several months. And so we're so grateful and give thanks to God with them that Eldo is now home. He continues to be in our prayers, but we're so grateful that he's gone home and he welcomes your visits is what he said. Also in our prayers this week is Julie Maddock. Julie is hospitalized at St. Mary's Hospital uh, with a kidney infection and kidney stones, and she got very sick. She's been in ICU, and she welcomes your prayers as well. We're going to continue worship now by singing the Advent candle lighting hymn. It's hymn number 240 in your red hymnal, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 this week. on the Advent wreath as we're counting down to the Christmas celebration. The third candle lit today is often called either the shepherd candle or the candle of joy. 
We remember that the angels sang a message of joy when they appeared in the Bethlehem countryside to the shepherds. And at this time of year, the shopping malls are filled these days with people who are shopping, thinking that they're going to find the perfect gift that will bring them true joy in their lives. Today's candle reminds us that our only lasting joy in this life is found in the joy that comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ. All other joy is fleeting and does not last. May the coming Christmas celebration fill our hearts once more with true and everlasting joy. We continue worship now with the confession and forgiveness as found on the cover of your bulletin. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. God Most High, we are creatures with limited vision and failure to walk faithfully. Forgive our failed attempts to be faithful children of God. Forgive us when we mistrust your promises. Forgive us when we seek evidence that your promises are true. Help us trust in you. Amen. Children of God, as we struggle, as we falter, I encourage you to try again. Know that the forgiveness of the one who created you and know the grace-filled promise of our Savior who forgives us again and again. Amen. We sing an Advent hymn now, hymn number 264. together the prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin God of the prophets you sent John into the world to proclaim the coming of your son give us ears to hear the proclamation of your promises 
and eyes to see your presence in this world. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time I invite the kids to come forward for a kid's message. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. She's making her way up. And now she's not so sure. <laughs> That's close enough. I brought some things here with me today. First of all, I brought something that I found on my desk the other day. There was a phone call while I was gone and so Andy left me a message there. It's a phone message and it says to Pastor Mary, Joanne called, please call her back when you get back to the office. And this was good news. You know how I know that? Because Joanne told me that all week she was baking cookies. So I thought this is good news. I'm happy about this. Okay, then the same day I got an email that came through the computer and it said, Pastor Mary, I can work at the food shelf tomorrow. Can you let the director know when she comes in? Thanks. This was good news too, because I love to see people volunteer and use their time and their talents to help other people. So that was really good news too. Then the same day I got another message. This time I got it on my phone. It was a text message and it was from my son who's away in college, Sam. And the simple fact that he texted me is a miracle in and of itself, okay? Because he never texts me anymore, okay? And the text message said, my last final, that means his last test, his last exam at college before the semester finishes, said my last final is Monday. That's a week from tomorrow. He said, so can I come, will you come and pick me up for Christmas break on Tuesday the 22nd. That was really good news because he's not home very often and he'll be home for a whole month. So I was so excited to get all those messages of good news. Today our Bible story is about message of good news and it didn't come in an email and it didn't come on the cell phone. But the message came, she won't even look at me. <laughs> the message came from who? Who brought the message, do you think? The angel came. The angel was named Gabriel. The angel Gabriel came with some good news to an old man and an old woman, woman named Anna and, or Elizabeth and, Elizabeth and Zechariah. And the angel had this message. The angel said, I have good news. A son named John will be born to you and your wife. He said this to Zechariah and he wanted Zechariah to share the news with Elizabeth. He will prepare, John, their son, will prepare the world for the Savior who will be born soon. So very, very good news came to Zechariah that day when he was at church. It happened when he came to church that the angel came to him. Now, I have good news for you too. Messages come from God to you, but they don't come through an angel. And the message God has for you is you're to be the messenger now, and you're to be the messenger, and you're to be the messenger, and even you. Our job is to be a messenger and to share messages of good news with everyone, okay? And you don't even have to be an angel to do it. God says, now you're my messenger. And the message that you're called to share is that God loves everyone. So can you repeat that with me? God loves everyone. Oh, louder than that. God loves everyone. You don't want to do it now either? 
God loves everyone. Okay, that's the message that you're to share. Okay? And you don't have to use a cell phone, and you don't have to use email, and you don't even have to dress like this to share the message. But every chance you get, you can share with someone. If they're looking sad or looking lonely, you can remind them, hey, God loves you. God loves everyone. Okay? I think all of us should should practice saying that message. What's the message that we have to share? God loves everyone. We're called to share that, okay? And you don't have to text it. You don't have to email it. You can share it in the way you live and in the way you talk with everyone you meet. Let's say a prayer now. Hold your hands. We're going to pray to God and give thanks that we have this message to share. Dear Dear God, thank you for giving us a message. Thank you for giving us the message. Thank you for loving everyone. Thank you for loving everyone. Help us share this good news. Help us share this good news. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up. Okay, if you want to go back to your seats. We're, I don't think we have a Sunday school teacher here today. So we'll just go back to our seats.
Our psalm today is Psalm 113, and we'll read it responsively. Please repeat after me with the bold verses. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. But the princes of his people, he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Here ends our psalm. And I'll read our Bible story in just a minute. An introduction first. And grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. Did you hear the story about the man who decided to become a monk? He joined uh, an order that's called a silent order meaning that no speaking is allowed. They were allowed to say only two words every 10 years. So the man entered the monastery, and after 10 years, he went to meet with the bishop and say then two words. So the monk said to the bishop, bed hard. And so the bishop saw to it that the monk got a better mattress for his bed, and Ten more years rolled past. And this time the monk went to the bishop and said to the bishop, robe scratchy. And so the bishop got the man a softer robe. And ten more years rolled past. And then the monk went to the bishop and this time he said, I'm leaving. And the bishop answered him saying, well, I'm not surprised at all. All you've done is complain since you arrived. So I ask, what would your first words be if you had to go silent and not speak for a long time? Today, our Bible story is about a man named Zechariah. He went nine months without speaking, nine months of silence, and we get to hear then today what his first words were when he finally spoke. Reading now from the book of Luke, chapter 1. Praise to you, O Lord. This is kind of an introduction to the traditional story that we read at Christmas time. When we read the story about Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem and the donkey in the stable, we're reading from Luke, chapter 2. So we see what is in that first chapter. And it's Advent, so it's about the preparation then for the coming of the Savior. And in this case, then, the coming of the one who will prepare the way, the coming of John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1. It's a long story, so read along with me if you want to watch along. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were very righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and the regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once he was serving as a priest before God, and his section was on duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at that time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of God were praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was terrified. Fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, 
Don't be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah was very skeptical, and he said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. And the angel, angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Now we're jumping ahead to 57. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And it was on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, But none of your relatives have that name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give his son. He asked for a writing tablet, and he wrote. Zechariah wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately, Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue was freed. And he finally began to speak after nine months, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbors. And all of these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. So after being silent for nine months, he spoke. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who would hate us. Thus, he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered the holy covenant or the holy promise, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we being rescued from the hands of our enemies might save, serve him without fear in holy and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, he was saying now to his little son, you child will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. That child, he grew up, and he became strong in faith, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It's a long reading. I looked at how to cut the story down, and I felt like I needed to include all the elements. The story begins someplace just like this in a worship center where Zachariah worked. Um, Mary, who would give birth to Jesus, was a much younger cousin to Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Zechariah had no children, though, and the angel Gabriel, as the story says, appeared to them and said, even though you're old, I have a promise for you. You will conceive a child, and you will name him John, and John will prepare the way for the coming Savior. 
The angel Gabriel was not at all amused, though, when Zechariah was skeptical about this promise. Gabriel said that if all you're going to talk about is skepticism and doubt about God's wonderful promises to you, then you're going to be silent so that you don't share any more skepticism or doubt with anybody else. You're going to have to wait now for this promise to be fulfilled. And the man was silent. For nine months, he didn't speak. Some might call it a curse. Elizabeth might have called it a blessing. Who knows, okay? But Elizabeth got pregnant, just like the angel Gabriel promised, and Zechariah was quiet throughout the whole pregnancy, and the baby was born, and it was a boy, just like they promised. And then on the eighth day, as was their custom, Relatives and neighbors all gathered around the family, and in a Jewish ceremony, the child is named. At the naming ceremony, it's usually the father who presides, but since Zechariah was quiet, he probably had a priest fill in for him. The first thing that happens is a prayer of thanksgiving to God is prayed for this new life, this miracle that's born into the family. And then uh, the naming takes place, and then if it's a boy, the circumcision takes place as well. The priest started with that prayer, and then he went right into the naming ceremony, and he assumed since this is the firstborn boy child, as was most every family custom in that time, he went ahead and began naming the child Zachariah after his father. And surprising because it wouldn't have happened in most cases, Elizabeth interrupted the priest and told him that the baby would instead be named John. John, it even says in the scripture passage, surprisingly, John, what are you doing? You're crazy. You can't name him John. You don't have any relatives named John who would think of giving a different name like that to a child. And then to make certain, he turned to Zechariah to make sure that his voice was heard in this somehow and father Zechariah agreed the baby is named john and just then because of his faithfulness then his tongue is freed up and his mouth was open and he could speak again and after those long nine months of silence john finally speaks he doesn't complain about a hard bed or a scratchy robe the first words out of his mouth were thanksgiving to god He began, we even have always called it Zachariah's song. And so not only did his mouth open, he just broke into song and started singing, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. And we call this now the Benedictus. And if you go and worship in almost any Catholic church, you will hear it each and every week. The praise song of Zachariah the Benedictus. Zachariah's first words were about God and the good things that God has done and why God has done these wonderful things. And he sings a long song, okay? He continued to sing, reminding everyone that God had looked with kindness, God had looked with favor upon God's people, God had always kept his promises and he had redeemed us. And then he said, God has always been there because we have always needed to be rescued, he reminded them. And God has rescued us, and one more time, he said, God will rescue us again. And then he said it, not in the future tense, but he almost promised it in the past tense. God has raised up a mighty Savior for us, just as God has promised he would do through the prophets of old. Even though Jesus had not yet been born, just remember that Zechariah knew something inside news. Because at that point, Elizabeth's much younger cousin, Mary, was already pregnant. Gabriel had visited her as well. And then we know for certain that Mary had gone to see her older cousin, Elizabeth, and they talked about the babies they would be having. And she was probably only three months along, so Jesus had yet to be born. But from Zachariah's point of view, God had kept his promises. God had kept his promises in giving them John, whose purpose was to prepare the way. And then Gabriel promised Mary the role that her child would 
play in life and in salvation. And that baby was on its way. And so he spoke about it almost from a past tense that surely the promise of the Savior is coming true. It's almost as if he was singing, He's on his way. Jesus is on his way. The Savior of the world is coming. And that Savior will rescue us. And it's a promise from God. And you can count on that promise. Words of great hope and not just about the future. He said, it's sure as it is here today. I really needed to hear this song of Zechariah this past week. It has been a dark time, I think. It's been a dark advent this year with the struggles going on in our world. And it seems like whenever I turn on the TV or the internet, I see another tragedy that's occurred or I hear more words of vile hatred or the fear that's really gripping us as a nation. And they overwhelm me. And I need a word of hope from God. I need to be reminded, and Zechariah was the messenger for me today, I need to be reminded that in Jesus, we are rescued. I need that song of Zechariah to remind me that God keeps his promises. I needed his song to remind me that Jesus is a light, as Zechariah sang. Jesus is a light that shines brighter than any darkness we might have in our world. The promise of the Savior brings us salvation. And as Zechariah promised, the Savior guides us, the Savior gives us hope, and the Savior comforts us even when darkness and death and hatred and fear are present, so present around us. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of things going on in our world that are very real and affect us in a lot of ways. But in the big picture, I definitely and I defiantly believe that God will redeem it all. All of it. And that our God will be victorious in turning our fear and our fighting and our hatred into peace. God will transform our sadness into joy and transform all that anxiety that we have into hope. And so I stand defiantly and I cling to the promise that God is stronger than any evil that we can see in this world and that God is the living light of the world that no darkness can overcome. Living hopeful then because of the promised Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. Singing about that light and that hope. I invite you to sing together with me hymn number 715.
Please rise now and join me on page 105 at the front of the red hymnal as we confess our common belief using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to one another now and greet them with this peace which comes from our God. Please rise as we sing together now verses 1 and 2 of 257, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
We gather our hearts now in prayer as we pray for the church and the world and all those in need. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for keeping your promises in the midst of the darkest time of the year, in the midst of the darkness that fills our world. Remind us often that the light of Jesus shines brighter than any darkness. Remind us often that goodness is stronger than evil. And remind us often that the promised Savior comes to transform us and bring us peace and joy and hope. Give us strength to trust in your promises. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, you send us as messengers of love and hope. May we not only pray for peace in our world, but work for peace. May we not only pray for hope and joy, may we bring joy and hope into this corner of the world. Help us not only pray, but to be an answer to prayer. Use us to bring light and hope into our world. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, help all those who wait upon your promises. We pray for those who wait for healing and strength and comfort. We pray this day for all those who grieve. Remind them often of the promise of the resurrection. Today we pray for Julie Maddock. We pray for Aldo Overbo, Carter Schrader, Les Salisbury, Jan Helfritz, Don Zabel, Marlene Sievers, as well as Connor and Abby and Ray. We pray as well for our members and our loved ones who are serving in the military. We pray, God, that you would keep them safe in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing together now um, another Advent hymn, hymn number 253. that coffee fellowship is being served you're welcome to that and at this time the choir is actually going to sing so we are going to kind of try to they're going to practice for their cantata so we are going to try to clear out the sanctuary soon so they can practice go in peace serve the lord thanks be to god <laughs> 